So far, we've just been looking at our code in each of our examples, and we're going to do that a little bit here in colored points. But we're also going to look at how to clean up that code. So which one are we in? We're in chapter two, colored points, this last one here. So let's um, go ahead and clean some things up. So I told you before that we can clean up the way that these are written a little bit so they're a little bit easier to read. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, through the magic of pause, we now have this all cleaned up. We don't have all those backslash ins and pluses and whatever and strings making this hard to deal with. The next thing we're going to clean up is the fact that there's quite a few things which really there's only one of in our program and our life is going to be easier if we make them global. Now I know you've been taught um, or you should have been taught that too many global variables make your life really painful. And while that's true, user interface elements are typically a place where it's not crazy to have global elements because we, for instance, only have one canvas in this program and only one GL drawing context. Uh, and because we're doing class assignments, we don't have to worry that we're going to later want to have three different canvases on our web page. So we, we can just go ahead and make those things global. So I'm going to do that here. So what do we have this global? Um, in, in some sense really is global in our program. The canvas, this drawing area, the GL context that we have here, uh, things that have to do with the shaders, and things that have to do with the shaders are the variables in the shaders. So we're not having multiple shaders in our program, and for the course of this class, we're only going to have one vertex shader and one fragment shader. So every variable that's defined in here we need to have a JavaScript equivalent of the variable, which is in the fragment shader. So all these A positions um, and U frag color and these variables which we're passing from Java to the shaders, we also want to have those to be globals. So I've gone ahead and added those here. So these are the global variables for the things that we looked at that are user interface elements or data which we have to pass from JavaScript to GLSL, for which we really know we're only going to have one copy. And we'll see in a little bit why this has helped us. So the next thing that I want to do is to pull out into some separate functions some things to make our main easier to understand. So in the book, they've got everything just very linear in the code, right? We, we, we always have to pay attention to we're initializing our shaders and we're De declaring our variables and then the real thing that we're trying to do is is in this work on mouse downs and clicks and maybe um, do some other operations and it's not very clear because it's all been laid out linearly now why does the book do this because they have to li list code in a in a book but we're writing code that's going to get big we're going to have hundreds of lines of code by the end of this class so we'd like to pull these out into some more reasonable thing so the first section that i want to look at is the things that have to do with webgl so these are items which have to do with setting up the webgl context so i'm going to make myself a function for those things i'm just going to grab i'm just going to cut these out and then make a new function right here so i've taken the code that was here moved it up here into a function which is set up webgl it's exactly the same code just cut and paste called the function set up webgl now we reload the web page to run and boom, I've got an error. Well, this is pretty annoying because all I did was take exactly the code that was here and stick it inside of another function. So now what gives? So this is a chance for us to understand something about debugging. So here we are, where, where have we died? We're in our main function. We died inside of init shaders. So we didn't die when we called our new function. We call when we call the next thing inside init shaders. Something went wrong here. Um, and it went wrong inside of some function called down inside, inside of there. So now what's going wrong? So let's take a look and see if we can figure out what, what is going wrong here. So let's just set a breakpoint. Now you set breakpoints by clicking on the number. So I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint inside this setup webgl function. I'm going to reload this page. And now we're stopped on this point and we can see what's, what's in here. So we can take some steps. Uh, step, step, step over this function, let's step over this function. So now we can maybe start to see what's going on. We have some variables, there's some global variables and there's some local variables. Hey, now wait a minute. 
we've defined a local variable. This says we have a local variable, GL in Canvas. I don't know what this means exactly yet, so let's don't worry about this too much yet, but let's just go ahead and take some, some steps. I'm going to put another breakpoint here before we call this next function. Okay, so now here we are back out of our setup WebGL, back at line 52, and let's go look for our global variable GL, which we would like to be set up. Well, this is a problem with declaring things global. I'm not sure we can find it anywhere. Well, let's do this. We can go to our console window, and we'll just type GL and see what we get. GL is undefined. So what gives? We just defined GL. And if it wasn't defined, we should have got a console log. So what's happening? What's happening here is a scoping problem. And this is a very common problem that you can get yourself into uh, using JavaScript. So one of the reasons that I like to make these variables global is so that I can use them everywhere and not be confused at which level is the variable that I'm using. So the problem here is that by using this bar, we've declared a new local variable inside this function. We don't really want to do that. We really want to, when we define Canvas and GL, for them to be setting these global versions so that we have access here at line 42. So now that I've made this small change here, let's go ahead and save and rerun. Okay, we get here to Canvas. I'm going to just continue from here. Now we get down here to line 42. So now let's take a look. Now we have GL is defined. So I went in my console and typed GL, and now I can see that it's defined here. So now we're in better shape. So let's see if we've got it fixed up now. All we've done is we've removed those bars. Uh, I've saved, and I've reloaded my page, and now I can click and I can run again. So now we're back in business. We've just taken what was here, we've moved it up into a function here, and we've cleaned up our main a little bit, and it's going to help us out later on. So now this function set up WebGL, you should never have to touch it again, I think, for the remainder of the quarter. It's just going to be there setting up our canvas that we're going to keep using. If you want to uh, later make some change in the way that canvas is set up, I suppose you might get to it, but I believe you won't have to. So what's the next thing we'd like to clean up? So we have a bunch of things that are related to our GLSO program. So these shaders are GLSO programs. And so we would like to, everything that's related to them, get it set up in the in the beginning. So here we have several things. This compiles and installs our shader programs. And these set up the variables that we're going to pass in. So we'd like to take all this GLSL setup stuff and move it out into a function also. So I'm going to do that. So here I've made a new function called connect variables to GLSL. I've taken the initialized shaders and the connections to the variables and I've moved them up inside this function. Let's be careful as we did before to make sure that we're getting the global version of these variables and not accidentally declaring a new scope, local scope variable. So what do these calls do? I told you this is compiling and installing the shaders. This is looking for the pointer location for A position. This A position right here is referring to the code up here in the shader, this A position, that name has to match, as we talked about previously. This A position is the JavaScript variable, which is referencing A position. And we're going to use this variable later when we want to go set that, um, set that value in GLSL. And we've made this JavaScript variable and this JavaScript variable to be globals here so that we can access them from anywhere. So now we're ready to look at what is left inside of main. So there's going to be something about a mouse handler. We'll come back to that in just a second. And then we've seen these before. We're going to set a clear color, which in this case is black, and we're going to clear. So just to make sure we know what this does, let's take a look at what happens if we try to change this clear color. So let's, let's just set it to red here. Let's save and let's reload. Okay, we got red, but we can still click our points. We don't see the red ones up in this quadrant, of course, anymore. So I'm going to set it back to black. Now that we've verified, we know what's going on. So this part of the code, we know what's going on. So the only other thing that's happening in this main is this line right here. 
Okay, so this is something new that's happening in this program. So let's see what this is. So canvas is our canvas. On mouse down, we're going to register a function handler. So in JavaScript, um, if you've used Java before, this will seem natural. If we've used C as a language, this will seem less natural because you don't tend to do this in C. We're going to assign a function to this variable, right? So the canvas variable has a subfield, and in that subfield, we're going to assign a function. And what is that function that we're going to assign? Well, we're going to define it right now. So rather than naming a function, we could we could put a function up here like we did before and name and use the name function and assign it. But rather than naming it, we're going to have this anonymous function, which is just specified right here. So the function, which has a parameter of the event, so whenever the mouse down happens, the event is going to get called on this. We, what are we going to do? What's going to be in our function? We're going to call our click function um, whenever this happens. And we're going to pass in these extra things. Now, why did we pass these in? The reason we were passing all of these things in is because they were local to the main program. But now that we've made them global, so we can get access to them inside of our click function. So let's go take a look at this click function for a minute here. So this click function has a bunch of things in it, but we see that it's defined to take parameters to get the GL and the canvas and the A position and the U fragment. So why are all these passed? Because they were only defined in the other place and I wouldn't have access to them to click otherwise. So this is one of the reasons, because we're going to have a lot of user interface elements, it's convenient to be getting access to our other user interface elements in a global way. So I push those up. Now, do you have to do it this way? Not at all. We can argue about whether it's a good programming style or, or not. I'm going to go ahead and do that here because I think it makes it more clear. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just use the global book uh, versions of these variables and don't pass them around because I think it's more clear what's going on. So I'm going to get rid, I'm going to come here, I'm going to get rid of them from my parameters here. And I'm going to get rid of them from my parameters here. And I'm going to reload and we can see that our function is still still working the same way why because all those variables that we were using are now from the global context when we get to this click but we only have one place we can be clicking so it's not that i have three different click functions that i need to be careful how i'm passing these things around now the next thing is since we've simplified this so much that the only thing we're doing is calling one function inside of here we don't need this anonymous anonymous function um, syntax now i find it a little bit confusing because i'm coming from a c programming background some of you will find this completely natural and it won't bother you at all but for some of you it will but we can simplify this so this makes more sense to me so i'm going to change it to be the way that that makes more sense to me when there's a mouse down use click here it is click is defined 